Number one, which pair will form the most polar covalent bonds? The most polar bonds will be formed when they have the greatest difference in electronegativity. So if you compare the halogens, the most electronegative will be fluorine, the least electronegative will be iodine. So a pairing between fluorine and iodine will be the most polar bond. Number two, which one will show the correct Boltzmann distribution? Temperature one is lower than temperature two. So the one with the lower temperature, its peak will be to the left, but its peak will be higher. So T1, the peak will be on the left side. T2, the peak will be on the right side. Number three, cesium chloride has this lattice, sodium chloride and magnesium oxide has this lattice. So what appears to determine the type of lattice? The charge on the cation, for cesium, the charge is plus one. If it depends on the charge of the cation, then it should have the same lattice as sodium, which is also plus one. However, it's not the same for cesium and sodium. So the charge on the cation doesn't determine the lattice structure. Ratio of the ionic charges. These are the charges. Okay. If the ratio is actually all 1 is to 1. Okay. If we simplify magnesium 2 plus to oxide 2 minus, it still simplifies to 1 is to 1. So all of them are 1 is to 1. So that will not make them that that would not be the reason why they have different lattice. The ratio of the ionic radii. We have the numbers here, the ionic radii. So we take the positive radii over the negative uh, radii for all three of them. So the radius for the po cesium is one six seven and one eight over one eight seven. We get one zero point nine. Magnesium oxide, 0 0.5. Sodium chloride, we get 0 0.56. We can see that sodium chloride and magnesium oxide are pretty close as compared to cesium chloride. So this could be a reason why these two have the same structure, whereas cesium chloride has a different structure from the other two. sum of the ionic charges, if the sum of the ionic charges determine the lattice, then again cesium chloride and sodium chloride, we expect them to be the same lattice. Okay, in this case it's not. Number four, enthalpy change of this reaction. If you are given bond energy, the general uh, equation is bond energy of reactants, subtract bond energy of products, you get the enthalpy change. So breaking of bonds, we break the CO bond, we break two of the hydrogen covalent bonds and then forming of products we have three CH bonds form, one CO bond form and one OH bond form. So the three numbers are here and we use our calculator we will have minus one zero one kilojoules um, exothermic reaction. Number five, which solid has a simple molecular lattice? Sulfur, simple molecular structure. Calcium fluoride is ionic, nickel, metallic, silicon oxide is the giant covalent structure. Number six, Activation energy of the forward reaction is represented by the difference between this level and this peak. So E1 minus E2, that will give us the amount for the activation energy. Number seven, we have helium and 
neon connected by connected together and then we want the final pressure when the valve is opened so what is the best way to do it I believe is we visualize each individual gases pressure on their own first so helium we have a flask helium here neon here so 5 dm cube 10 dm cube so at first we have helium and then this occupies 5 dm cube at a pressure of 12 kilopascal and then when we mix them to we allow it to expand it occupies actually a total of 15 dm cube so what we have to do is use this equation pv at the start equals to pv at the end just for helium alone so 12 times 5 which is the amount at the start we don't know the pressure at the end but we know that the volume at the end for helium is 15 so this is the only unknown we work out that the new pressure or the final pressure of helium is 4 kilopascal that's for helium we repeat the method for neon so neon at the start is 10 and exerts a pressure of 6 kilopascal is allowed to expand into the other flask so that it occupies 15 in the end so that the new pressure for neon alone is 4 kilopascal okay. they do not necessarily have to be the same it depends on the amount but just in this case the numbers make it such so that they are the same so we have helium exerting 4 kilopascal we have neon exerting 4 kilopascal the total we just sum them up we will have a total of 8 kilopascal so work on each gases on their own and then sum them up number 8 we have number 8 we have this overall equation which we have to find out the enthalpy change and we are given the help of these two equations so I write out the overall equation here and I see how I can manipulate these two plus other equations to form this overall equation so there's a CA solid here and we have a CA solid for the first equation on the same side so the order we will just follow accordingly okay, keeping the solid on the left side and since we follow this order this number we do not flip it around it's plus 177 it will still be plus 177 if you change the order then it will be minus 177 so we have this calcium solid accounted for we have calcium equals 2 plus here we have calcium equals 2 plus on the right side also so again we will follow the order that is given for the second equation and since we follow the order it will be minus 1565 there are still some missing information this is equals there is still some missing information we do not have electrons appearing and in the overall equation we do not have calcium gas or calcium 2 plus gas appearing also so what we need to do is get rid of the calcium 2 plus and get rid of the calcium gas how we do that we write the third equation that is on the opposite side meaning calcium gas is on the right side we get rid of it by writing calcium gas on left side of the equation calcium 2 plus is on this side we get rid of it by writing calcium 2 plus on the other side so they will cancel eventually and not appear in the overall equation and then we have two electrons on the overall equation okay, I can write it out like this what is this actually calcium gas losing two electrons forming calcium 2 plus ions they are gases this is the 
first IE plus second IE of calcium. That is found in the data booklet. Remove a calcium or remove an electron. The first one will require 590. The second one will require 1150. So we sum them up. Endothermic reaction. So plus 590 plus 1150. Okay. Endothermic in this direction. We are removing an electron. We can double check that our overall equation is correct. Ca2 plus cancels out. And then our Ca gas cancels out, giving us our overall equation. Ca2 plus gas equals on this side. So once we have all these numbers, we just have to take plus 177 minus 1565 plus 590 plus 1150. That will give us plus 3520. Number 9. How can we de describe the behavior of each substance? We can see that HNO3 actually gains a hydrogen to form a new product. H2SO4 loses a hydrogen. So gaining hydrogen or gaining a proton is behaving like a base. H2SO4 losing hydrogen, a proton is behaving like an acid. The reverse, H2NO3 plus, to go backwards, it has to lose a proton. So now it's behaving like an acid. And HSO4 minus to become H2SO4, it has to gain a proton. That's when it behaves like a base. Which molecule does not contain three atoms bonded at an angle between 109 and 110? I draw the structure. For ethanoic acid, we have this carbon joined to 4 in a tetrahedral manner. So this is 109.5. So it fulfills this condition. So that's out. Graphite, this structure, the angles involved are 120 degrees. Okay, so it doesn't bond an angle between 109 and 110. So graphite is the one we are looking for. Propane, if you were to check, it's tetrahedral, so it's 109.5 silicon dioxide is tetrahedral giant covalent 109.5 so b is the answer